For years, if you were in the market for a sports sedan, your choices were either German, German, the occasional Japanese, and maybe even an American entry. However, as an enthusiast, what I've always wanted was really an Italian sports sedan. And when Alfa Romeo made their glorious return to the US a couple of years ago, they really only started with a vehicle that wasn't a mainstream vehicle, the 4C. Now, Alpha says they are targeting up to 800,000 sales in the world by 2018, and this is the vehicle designed to do it. This is the 2017 Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. This is the one that competes head-on with competitors like the BMW M3, Mercedes-Benz C63. So after a 30-year hiatus from the rear drive sports sand segment, was this new Giulia Quadrifoglio worth the wait? Let's take a look and find out. So with any Italian car, you're probably wondering what's going on underneath the hood first. So that's precisely where I'm going to start. Because I have the Quadrifoglio model, this is the high performance edition and it has a high performance motor. Now, first of all, you're gonna notice the hood is carbon fiber. That's of course uh, going to do with the weights to reduce the weight of this vehicle. And what you're looking at is an engine that's been developed by Ferrari engineers for Alpha. It's the same motor as the California T, which is a V8 where Ferrari engineers lopped off the two front cylinders. So now it's a V6. It's a 2.9 liter twin turbocharged V6. Speaking of which, the turbos are capable of pushing out 35 pounds of boost. That's the most boost pressure I've ever seen in a production engine. Uh, because of the crazy boost, this thing puts out very crazy numbers. 505 horsepower, 443 pound-feet of torque. That's more than what you get in the twin turbo V8 Mercedes C63S uh, and about um, 443 pound-feet of torque. Now it all goes through the rear wheels through a carbon fiber drive shaft uh, and a limited slip differential. Now, Alpha did promise a six-speed manual when they first um, said this car was coming. However, they, they cut it at the last second now you only get that ZF eight-speed automatic, which we'll go into the driving dynamics later. A lot of enthusiasts are still complaining about it. It's a really great transmission. Now, fuel economy is not a priority with this type of vehicle, but the engine does have cylinder deactivation. It'll shut off at stoplights to save gas, and it's rated at 1724, not bad MPG. In my weeks worth of testing, I actually got this thing up to 28 miles per gallon on a pure highway run, which is actually really good MPG uh, when you guys put it into its efficiency mode. But this vehicle weighs around 3,700 pounds. Alpha says it'll get to 60 in around 3.8 seconds. We'll go into the test drive later on and I'll show you just how beastly this thing drives. With any Italian car, the design is really where the money is spent. And the Alfa Romeo Giulia is definitely one of the most striking, beautiful cars that you'll see on the road, especially for just a run of the mill sedan body style. You can see for the Quadrifoglio, Alfa kind of pumped up the styling a little bit more. Of, a little bit more. of course, you're gonna get signature elements like the company's um, triangular grille, uh, these really nice, attractive swept back headlights with ha that have a really sleek design. Now for the Quadrifoglio model, Alfa puts a unique front end. You have uh, a lower front splitter, uh, uh, this particular carbon fiber lip right here actually is active. It's the first for a production model in this segment where the spoiler actually pops out about 10 degrees uh, when you have it in race mode when you hit about 70 miles an hour. Alpha says it generates like 300 pounds of downforce. Um, my tester is the beautiful shade of Rosso Competition Red. It's a $2,000 option. It's a beautiful color. This is the signature color that Alpha has been basically showing the car in. Now, uh, when you look around the rest of the body here, you can see there's lots of vents everywhere and that's to cool the engine. These vents are actually functional. You can feel heat coming out of the engine because this engine produces a lot of heat. Now, looking at the wheels here, uh, this is the optional five hole uh, dark graphite finish wheel. They're like a $500 option. Honestly, they look fantastic. I think this is the wheel, the best wheel for the car. They do offer a forged wheel that are a little bit lighter, a little bit stronger, but I prefer the design of these. My tester just has uh, the iron brakes. They're cross drilled. They have four piston Brembo calipers. There is an available carbon ceramic option if you guys want for 8,000 um, bucks. Obviously there's the Quadrifoglio four leaf clover badge. This is an element of the car that definitely is a huge conversation piece. When people see the car, they kind of just ask, why is there a good luck charm on the car? Of course, that has to do with their heritage with the Quadrifoglio badge. Now, looking at the rest of the profile, one thing you're gonna notice, there is no sunroof available on this car and that's because it has a carbon fiber roof. Uh, that's the reason why they don't offer a sunroof. And overall, it just kind of has a standard sedan profile. Definitely 
definitely looks very, very classic Italian in its design, especially in this red. Uh, I really like the kind of different sills they put uh, to make this car look a little bit more aggressive versus the standard models. Now looking at the rear design of the Giulia, you can see the Quadrifoglio model gives you a integrated carbon fiber lip spoiler, um, where it definitely gives it a more aggressive, mature look. And you can see there's not very many badges back here. There's no Quadrifoglio badge, there's no Clover badge, just a simple little Giulia badge with you know the Alpha badge. And I had a lot of people in my weeks of the testing asking me what the hell this car is. It's definitely a car that stands out. Now again, because it's the Quadrifoglio, you have this um, active or this functional rear diffuser that actually does add down for us. You have quad exhaust, which this vehicle is definitely one of the best sounding uh, sports sedans I've ever heard. Uh, it definitely has that Ferrari Italian noise that a lot of you may or may not be looking for. Now, first of all, because this is a sedan, let's take a look at the trunk really quickly. Um, and the trunk is not power assist, of course, I wasn't expecting that, but it is pretty big. You're looking at around 13 cubic feet of space. There is no spare tire, of course, and the seats don't fold down on the Quadrifoglio model, but they do if you guys decide to go for just the regular Julia or Julia TI editions. So with any luxury sports sedan, the interior is definitely a very important piece of the puzzle. And the Julia isn't really uh, gonna disappoint you in that regard either. And when we shut the door, it sounds nice and solid. So that gives you that feeling of quality, uh, something that Italian cars have kind of struggled with in the past. Now, every Julia model will come standard with the company's smart key access system uh, with push button start and remote start. This key is gigantic, but I'm glad to see it doesn't look like any other FCA product, to be honest. It's just a hugely massive key. It does feel good in your hands. Now, first settling into the interior, you can see here, you're probably wondering where the hell is the start stop button? And usually it's right here or down here. It's not in the Julia. It's actually over here on the steering wheel on the left side. So that does take some getting used to uh, versus uh, some of its competitors. But to start it up, just put your foot on the brake and then push this button here to fire it up. And thank God it starts, which has always been a butt of jokes with Italian cars. But honestly, in my weeks worth of testing, this car hasn't given me any problems like that. But when you start it up, you can hear it's a very racy sounding engine. And that's exactly why you, you decided to go for this type of car. And one thing you're gonna notice is when you put it into its race mode here, you can hear the exhaust changes its pitch and it literally sounds like it's straight pipes. So again, adds to that exciting feel. One of the reasons why I love this car so much, it's definitely one of the most exciting cars I've had all year long. Now, let's talk about the interior a little bit because this is an area that uh, Alpha did spend some time um, making a lot more mainstream in its design. You can see the materials in here are pretty good. Um, there's nice stitching on the dashboard here. There's some genuine carbon fiber trim. Uh, the dash is all soft touch on this lower portion here and it's also soft touch right here where your uh, knees may hit this portion here because this is a pretty large center console. Now, looking at this steering wheel, this is the optional carbon fiber Fiber steering wheel. It's like a thousand dollar option. Love the steering wheel with this carbon fiber here, the suede Alcantara, the contrasting stitching. It feels good in your hands and this car has literally one of the quickest steering ratios in the segment. And the wheel is also heated. It's heated all the way through and that's definitely a nice feature. Now looking at the rest of the door panel here, it's the same stuff as the dash. It's leather stitch. There's more carbon fiber. The windows are one touch automatic for all four. You kind of expect that. This is a pretty expensive car. Now let's talk a little about the center console here because this is a um, new infotainment system that I, doesn't really share much with the rest of the FC lineup. Now, first of all, uh, this is the upgraded 8.8 inch display. You can see I have it on a split screen view right now where you can put navigation audio there. You can also switch that if you want. It's all controlled from this little knob right here, uh, which is very much BMW like meets Mazda meets Audi. That's where I see a lot of design influence, even the shifter here. I mean, if you're going to steal, you better steal from the best, right? But pushing this menu button here, uh, you can see you have all your different sources. First of all, you need to remember this isn't a touch screen, um, so don't try to be putting your fingerprints all over that. I wish the bezel kind of match the size of the screen. You can see it's got a lot of unused space here. I kind of think Alpha should have just went with a tablet style screen uh, to kind of go with that more modern look. But again, it does make it just makes the screen look a little bit smaller. Now, first of all, the interface. Let's talk a little bit about that. The navigation function, it works relatively well if you're trying to set a destination. 
um, you kind of just push down on the center here and you kind of scroll and pick you know what you want to input in I did find that sometimes the menu structure took a little bit of getting used to I mean this is an Italian car I'm gonna expect quirks uh, your radio sources here of course this car has you know satellite radio it has HD radio AM FM uh, Pandora it has some of those apps what this car is lacking is Android Auto and CarPlay Alpha didn't put it in this car which is kind of a, a silly omission I'm hoping they rectify that in the future with a quick update and whatnot but um, putting the vehicle into reverse here let's talk a little about the backup camera I'm a little disappointed with the backup camera I tried to make it so it took up the whole screen they don't offer that option instead you have kind of the half screen here it does have trajectory it has parking sensors for and wear so that definitely helps this car um, when you're trying to parking because you don't want to scrape those wheels uh, and whatnot now the shifter is definitely very reminiscent of a BMW um, it has you know the traditional uh, or it has that button where you push to park if you want to put into drive you push this little trigger here pull back for drive push forward for reverse and then if you want to go to a manual mode you slap it over here speaking of which you can use the manual mode from this little joystick here or you can use the Ferrari style steering wheel paddle shifters which are full aluminum and I love how they are connected to the actual um, column instead of the wheel so they always stay in place that definitely helped with uh, trying to find them whenever you were driving aggressively now the center console lid right here is nice and leather padded um, it doesn't slide or adjust it doesn't really need to and it's a decent size uh, definitely lacking in terms of storage all you have is the cup holders here and then this right here so I wish that Alpha gave you a little bit more storage uh, but again this is an Italian car it's gonna have those quirks here and there uh, the seats are definitely super aggressive um, these are the standard seats they have an adjustable bolstering here so they hug you you can go for like an optional Recaro kind of um, carbon fiber seat which my tester obviously doesn't have but it does have a thigh extender it has like a 14-way adjustments and I found the seats to be comfortable I took this vehicle on a two hour long road trip and I found the seats to be really supportive when you put into its advanced efficiency mode everything in this car just kind of changes now speaking of which let's talk a little bit about this controller right here this is the DNA selector this is the drive mode selector it actually does stand for DNA this is the DNA Pro because it's the the quadrifolio so you get that race mode uh, D stands for dynamic N stands for natural or normal and then A stands for advanced efficiency when I put it into its advanced efficiency mode this thing really can get pretty impressive gas mileage but it also slows down the responses now whenever you have it in dynamic or race you can actually adjust the shock absorbers by pushing this button here it'll go from like a mid uh, to a aggressive to a soft that's all you know to give you that little extra level of control one thing I wish this car did give you was an ability to turn on the loud exhaust like you heard when it's in race mode because when you put it in race mode it shuts off all the nannies which is not what I would recommend when the weather is bad or if you're on the street uh, if you wanted to just if you want the nannies on you have to put it into dynamic but then it kind of quiets the exhaust down a little bit I'm hoping alpha will kind of update that and give you a loud exhaust button and like some of its competitors but overall I wish it had a sunroof um, but the interior is pretty nice definitely not class leading nice like the Mercedes uh, AMG but this is on par with the current M3 and the Lexus RCF and way better than the Cadillac ATS-V that I tested last year now you were probably trying to convince your spouse or significant other to get a 4C when that came out however the Julia definitely makes an easier proposition to sell to your significant other you can see when you get back here the rear seat is pretty much competitive with all the other compact sports sedans I have decent uh, foot space underneath here there is a pretty large hump right here because this is a rear drive vehicle but you can see for two people it's a pretty nice fit now one thing it is missing is a center armrest here I was surprised to see that Alpha didn't include that you do have an adjustable headdress uh, but in terms of the materials you can see there's still the same soft touch stitching more carbon fiber aluminum there is two map pockets here and then alpha gave you a nice little usb and then some rear seat vents remember this is a luxury car no there's no heated rear seats back here and again i'm going to complain again about the lack of an armrest but it's not a bad place to spend time for just two people of average height so now for the part that you all have probably been waiting for the test drive now this is my first time actually driving the all-new Julia and I'm really happy to see that Alpha sent me the quadrifolio model now I, I realize most of you are probably going to be going for the TI the four-cylinder and I will be showing you a full video of that whenever Alpha uh, sends me uh, the normal versions however the quadrifolio model this is the one that enthusiasts have really been just drooling over I, I seriously couldn't wait to get my hands on one and drive one when they showed the car a couple of years ago so first impressions the first thing I'm noticing immediately is just how 
normal this car feels. I have it in its natural setting. The ride is super controlled, damped. It's really quiet, it's really smooth. The steering, lightning quick. Uh, Alpha says this is the quickest steering ratio in the segment, and it definitely shows whenever you turn the wheel side to side, even in normal, it has, it's really light, it's super quick. And the car is so darty, it just changes directions really quickly. You're probably gonna make your passengers sick if you guys keep doing that, so I wouldn't recommend it. Just probably do that when you're driving by yourself. But, I mean, overall, you wouldn't think that this is an Italian sports sedan. It, it literally just drives like a lot of its German, Japanese, American competitors. It's just a really easy car to drive. However, when you switch the DNA drive mode selector over to dynamic, that's when this car's character completely changes. And that was illegal speeds like in no time. So um, the Alfa Romeo Giulia definitely is a car that is not for a beginner. I mean, this is a car that's gonna get you into trouble if you don't have discipline with your right foot, kind of like I am sometimes. Holy shit. <laughs> Um, and the exhaust in this car is definitely gonna put a huge smile on your face. It makes the prerequisite farting noises that modern cars, modern sports cars are supposed to make when you drive them quickly. And you, to be honest, this is the dynamic setting. There is a mode above this in race and that shuts off the nannies. Uh, it makes the exhaust basically straight piped, which I'll show you guys a couple times later. We just had a couple of rain a few hours ago, so the roads are still slightly damp, which by the way, this car is riding on Pirelli Corsas. They're fantastic race car tires basically they're a 60 treadwear tire however in the wet they're pretty useless so i wouldn't recommend driving this car in the rain aggressively at all now with an engine that has 35 pounds of boost you might be wondering how's the turbo lag and i'm very sad to report that it's pretty significant when you first get off the line um there are times where i literally floored the car didn't think i floored it but it, it takes a second for it to kick in um, but that's again that's a downside of having this much boost pressure to mitigate that you have to actually put it into race mode where it shuts everything off. And that's when the car tells you you need to put it in manual mode and then you need to build the boost pressure up and then let go of the brake. <laughs> Which by the way, <laughs> when it's in race mode, it definitely makes me a little scared because the car doesn't have any nannies on and you can feel the, the back tires want to slide around a bit, which again, it's got 505 horsepower. You kind of expect this to be a little bit more of a handful. Um, it's not something that you want to, you know, drive aggressively in the wet uh, or even on damp roads. These tires need to have some temperature built into them. But, you know, when it's in race mode, the car's character completely changes. The suspension goes super stiff. It literally feels like I'm driving a race car. Uh, now there is a setting here in the active dampers where you can actually make them a little bit softer. When it's in race mode, it offers like a mid softness where it kind of settles it down a little bit um, when you put it into its dynamic mode it offers like a soft comfort setting in the suspension which kind of makes it similar to when it's in normal or active eco i mean honestly when the suspension's in race mode it's a little too harsh to daily drive which is why alpha gives you the choice it's one of the reasons why you paid so much extra money for a car like this because it has dual personalities you can literally drive it you know as like a luxury sedan when it's in eco mode and then switch it over to race and take it to your local track and this car is pretty much track ready right off the showroom floor. <laughs> I seriously cannot get enough of those farting noises. That's one of the reasons why I would honestly just leave it in race mode all the time, just to hear the farting noises, which brings me to another issue that I have with this car regarding the exhaust system. To only, to get the full loudness of the exhaust, I have to put it in race mode, which automatically shuts off all the nannies. I wanna be able to just push a button and put it in loud exhaust mode. A lot of its competitors offer that feature. I imagine Alpha is probably going to fix that uh, in the next couple of years. I know that some owners have already been complaining about that issue a little bit, so it's something that Alpha is pretty much working on. Now, let me go back to it's just its dynamic setting and leave it in automatic, because this is probably the mode that a lot of you owners are gonna drive it in. And I have to say the Alpha has a nice blend between sportiness and comfort. The exhaust is a little bit louder versus in natural mode. 
Uh, the transmission, this is the ZF8 speed. Now let's, let's talk about the transmission for a bit because a lot of enthusiasts are pissed that Alpha did not bring this car with the six speed manual, which is also a ZF transmission. Now I've never driven the manual version of this car. From what I hear, it's not the best manual. It's a little bit um, numb. The throws are a bit longer from what I hear. The clutch is a little bit hard to drive smoothly. Um, so, you know, I'm not entirely angry that the, the manual's not here. I imagine Alpha is gonna look at demand and see, think about adding it if they need to based on cu customer demand. But the ZF8 speed is one of the best transmissions in the business. It's smooth, it's really quick shifting, it's responsive. It's definitely gonna be the transmission that most of you are gonna pick. Now Alpha says this car will get to 60 in like 3.8 seconds. I've seen it as quick as 3.6 seconds. <laughs> it's just unbelievable how quickly, how fast this car builds speed. I mean, it literally will top out at 191 miles an hour and that is something I don't doubt at all. This car will basically take you to triple digit speeds without you even knowing it. When you're going normal speeds, the speed limit, it feels like you're going too slow, but that's the one beauty about the, the Julia is the steering is so quick and responsive. The chassis feels so direct, um, so playful. It has a perfect 50-50 weight distribution. It's, I don't feel incredibly bored driving this car at legal speeds, in fact. I can pretty much drive it slowly at normal speeds like a Miata and it'll be fun to drive, but when you put it into race mode and really start pushing it, it's it reaches a new level of fun that I haven't really experienced experienced in all of its competitors. I, mean, I showed you guys the C63, I showed you the ATSV, the RCF. Haven't showed you the latest M3 yet, but you know, to be honest, this Alpha has the best steering out of all those competitors. It has the best ride and handling balance, and it feels the most balanced. Um, now, the traction with these tires, I mean, I'm not in the best conditions right now with it being slightly damp out here, but I have to say when it is dry and the tires have some traction, the this car puts down power similarly to an all-wheel drive car when you really get on. I mean, it's gonna have a little bit of that wheel hop when you put it in race mode, but you know, to be honest, that's kind of what you're gonna expect when you have a rear drive car with 500 horsepower like this. So, how do you, how do you think the fuel economy has been in case you guys are wondering i've actually been averaging around 16 and a half miles per gallon in the city now i took this on a trip a two-hour trip um, up to philadelphia and i got about 28 miles per gallon when i had it in advanced efficiency so this engine will do pretty good on gas when it shuts off three cylinders and just you know use the start stop and just drive it very very normally so in conclusion the driving dynamics of this car are fantastic what alpha has basically done here is they've disguised a race car as a luxury sedan and the julia quadrifoli is definitely the one you want to get if you're looking for that you know sweet balance and kind of a sleeper car to be honest uh, when you especially when you put it into race mode it's one of the most fun sports sedans you'll ever drive on the road period so in my line of work you guys know that I drive a lot of fancy cars and the Julia Quadrifoglio is definitely one of those cars that I'll remember for years to come this is a car that I've been egging or excited to drive for the longest time ever since Alpha announced it. Now first of all let's talk about a couple of points here the pricing of this car. A standard Julia actually starts at around 41,000, 43,000 if you guys go for the TI. That has a two liter turbo four. However that's not the model that you want. This is the model that you want if you're an enthusiast. The Quadrifoglio starts at around $73,000. A lot of money I know. It's actually about almost 10 grand more than a, your neighbor's M3 at a base point and about the same uh, same difference if you guys go for the Lexus or the Cadillac. Now if you want the Mercedes C63S that actually starts around seventy thousand dollars and I think the Julia is worth it because this is an Italian car they're gonna be charging more just for the sleek design alone now my tester has a couple of options on it uh, it's got the two thousand dollar paint it's got a fifteen hundred dollar driver assistance package and then the optional wheels all in my testers just under eighty thousand seventy nine thousand it's missing the eight thousand dollar carbon ceramic brakes so you could load up a Julia to be over almost $90,000 if you wanted to. Now, keep in mind, even though it does start higher than its competitors, uh, a comparable M3 or C63 can easily be around the 80,000 mark. The Mercedes is the most expensive. That can get up past 90 grand if you guys aren't careful with the options. Now, how does this car drive compared to its competitors? Well, first of all, I think the Giorgio platform is brilliant. It has the quickest steering ratio. It has an incredible ride quality. It just feels so direct and confident. You can literally drive this off the showroom floor, take it to the track, and just make yourself look like a hero. And it just has a lot of exciting details that some of its stale German competitors really doesn't have. It has the dynamics of the Cadillac ATS-V. However, the interior is far nicer. And in my week's worth of testing, I had so many random people seriously ask me about this car. It's a car that 
gets a lot of attention, so if that's exactly what you're looking for, you need to put the Julia Quadrifoglio at the top of your list. I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview of the 2017 Julia Quadrifoglio. If you're looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video.